tonight's showdown game of the week on My32, brought to you by Bellin Health. Welcome to your healthiest life. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, Irish spirit. Lamers, the passenger professionals. Simon's Specialty Cheese, experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese Little Shoe. Cobus and Buses, family pride in every ride. And Gandrew Chevrolet, Wisconsin's number one selling Chevrolet dealership. From Calder Stadium in Menasha, it's time for the My32 Sports Showdown. Tonight, it's week two of the high school football season as the Menasha Blue Jays play host to the Nina Rockets. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. Alongside John Mino, I'm Ted Stefaniak. Good to be out here. A little bit of a rain delay prevented us well, from starting the game on time. Well, not even a rain delay. You're right. As much as electricity in the air delay. Electricity, lightning, yeah, delayed yeah. it. So hopefully no more lightning delays for this game tonight. You know, John, we look at these two teams, Menasha and Nina, separated by 6.3 miles, as Google Maps will tell you. Very good. But they haven't played each other since 2013. 2013. Yeah. And this series goes back way, way, yeah. way back. I mean, Nina Manash, are you kidding me? You want to talk about some of the all-time great rivalries in the state? This is one of them. And tonight, Teddy, something really unique. They're coming together to support veteran causes. It's really neat. All the proceeds from this game going to some veteran causes. I salute them all. They're going to recognize a bunch of vets. Very special night here tonight in Manash. Yeah, we'll be talking about that a little bit later in the broadcast as well. As far as these two teams go tonight, two head coaches know each other very well. And their sons know each other very well, too. They're both the starting quarterbacks yeah, for both teams. Yeah, and both good ones. Both <laughs> really, really good ones. This is going to be a lot of fun. Neither team throws the ball all that much. Both teams can really run the ball really, really well. And they play tough defense. Both kind of left the area last week. Madison West and Beaver Dam were their opponents. It's always tough to get a read on those schools. No matter how much we try to follow them on, you know, the websites and everything, you just don't know how good a team is when you compare them to a team from that part of the state. So we are ready to get things going here. Take a quick look at what these two teams did last week, Johnny, as uh, Nina took on Madison West in a uh, relatively easy time of it, pretty easy time of it, 39 to 6. Yeah, you see uh, quarterback Matt Young had a nice ball game. 8 of 14 through the air, 57 yards, 9 rushes, 129 yards. And Jace Jenkins, they say watch out for him, 19 carries, 105 yards. Didn't have a lot of trouble with Madison West. No, they took care of business, as did Menasha last week. Played with a team that's a little bit closer and playing Beaver Dam and came away with a nice win, 34-23. Yeah, Beaver Dam. That, that, Menasha controlled that game a lot more than the final score indicates, but look at A.J. Korth. What an amazing game on the ground. 26 carries, 232 yards, three touchdowns. And Devontre Smith, look out for him. 25 carries, 138 yards. I just see on paper, Teddy, what they both did last week and, and the type of offenses they run. This is a great matchup. Now, we have said that in numerous <laughs> times over the last 20 years. Don't or jinx it. I'm not. All I'm saying is, this is one, Nina against Menasha, rivalry that goes back forever, and it's great to have them playing each other once again. Yeah, a little extra excitement in the stands, Absolutely. too, that these two communities get to face each other for the first time right. in football in quite a while. So we're ready to get started here with the kickoff. Late this evening, but here we go. It's Menasha wearing the blue uniforms, kicking off to Nina, who is in their white uniforms with red helmets. And... The kickoff is fielded near the 18-yard line. And trying to get to the 30, but pushed back to the 25-yard line. That's where the Rockets will start. Evan Vanderhoeven with the tackle for Menasha. Take a quick look at the offense for the Rockets. You're talking about Jace Jenkins. What a terrific game he had last week. And Matt Young, of course, the quarterback. He can also not only throw the ball, but he'll get out there and run, too. Outstanding runner. Both quarterbacks with good size. Both quarterbacks... The sons of the head coaches. So you know they've been schooled for a long time. I was talking to one of the Menasha people before the ball game down by the concession stand, and he said, I'm telling you what, A.J. Korth was watching film when he was five <laughs> years old. Whether he liked it or not. Whether he liked it or not. <laughs> Going with dad to the football field. That's awesome. First play is a running play right up the middle, and nothing. Maybe a half a yard pickup on that one. So Menasha comes out hitting right off the bat. That was Jace Jenkins with the carry that time. Nice job on the interior line for Menasha making the stop. Brings up second and nine. 
Quick look at the Manasha defense. Evan Vandenhoven, uh, Vandenhoven, the leading tackler last week for the Blue Jays. I see A.J. Korth on there. Some of the offensive guys. A lot of guys playing two ways. Yeah, I was surprised when I did the research, Ted. Flag on the play here as Nina takes it. Looks like they've got Jenkins a first down Hayden. there, but this two might be coming back. Jason down. Jenkins on the carry. And that flag came out really quick. All right. Yeah, really good procedure. Yeah. Pull that one back. Steve Benzervi, John Jensen, Donald Mitchell, Tony Radical, and Wade Turner are officiating crew tonight. You know, one of the refs Talking asked me for yards. the game. He said they had one of them. He was on a crew last year. Four of the five guys retired. Okay. Okay. So he wanted to know if 14. I wanted to do any officiating. I said, I said I do every game from the booth. <laughs> I think that's what he was referring to. I think so, too. <laughs> Honorary whistle for you? I said, exactly. Hook me up with some kind of radio after I see the replay. We know all about you, Mike. <laughs> so, second and 14 now for the Rockets. Winds up and fires this one deep. Intended receiver, Ben Baszler. Ten nice coverage Baszler. on the part of Manasha secondary. Bring up a Come third down here Andre's. for the Rockets. So early in the season, just the and second week of the season, of course, last down. season, just a mess. Yeah, but whatever, a mess. whatever it was. God bless the kids that got up there and played, and the coaches and the parents and everybody. But, man, let's just put that one in the rearview mirror. By the way, Teddy, how about this field? You know, last time we did a game here, they didn't have this kind of field, and they played in a quagmire. Remember yes, that? they did. Just a mud bowl. Divots. I remember the divots. Yep. Third and 14 from the 22. Young tucks it, looking for somewhere to go. Here comes that Blue Jay defense. They're all over him. Matt Young on well, that is a defense. swarming defense. As I mentioned, coming up quick that time, and Devontae Smith, number 22. One of those two-way players you were talking about. He had 138 yards rushing, a couple of touchdowns and last week against Beaver Dam. He won't come out. Well, yards, I'm just going to say he won't come off the field as he drives he comes off the off field. The field. <laughs> Not on special down teams. And long. So Darius, Darius Jones, Jones Jr., Jr. The, punter. the punter for Nina. It's a big punter. It's a big back deep. <laughs> we'll see him on defense as well. Big time linebacker. This one bounces near the 45 and takes Good a Nina bounce. roll. Wow. Down inside the 30. So we'll step away. You're watching Showdown on my 32. All down at the 27 yard line. And for the first time tonight, the Blue Jays have a it's first and 10 on keep the road. Keep it right here, my brother. More time with John Mino. <laughs> well, what more do you really want? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Except for less time. <laughs> So here's Menasha, first opportunity on offense, first and 10 from their own 27. A.J. Korth from the shotgun. Plenty of time, looks deep Open. down the field. Look at this ball, and caught, and inside the 25-yard line, what a pass from Korth. Seth Spath on the receiving end. That was, I'll tell you what, give that offensive line a lot of credit. He had all the time in the world, and I was watching the, the uh, wide receiver separate, and I thought, let it go, and he did at just the right time. Look at this great protection, Ted. Had a nice clean pocket, and what a beautiful Four, ball. I don't know if you'll see a better oh, looking pass. My goodness. First and that ten. was outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. <laughs> so ball down to the 23-yard line. For Menasha, their second play of the game, and they're already threatening. Keep it on the ground this time. Pick up a five for the Blue Jays. Coming up from the secondary, number 24, Trevor McGinnis. 6'3", 180-pound junior safety. Came up hard. So a gain of about four. That pass, Ted. <laughs> Holy man, was that it nice. Was, it was just, it was so perfect. perfect. I mean, pretty through the I mean, air. The no tightest wobble. spiral you've ever seen. Hmm. Well, they said he was good. From the 19 now. Keeper. Up the middle. 
and goes to the 10 yard line. And inside the Gallagher's Pizza Red Zone, Eric stop Schuffelberger Eric making a stop. 6'1", 220 pound junior. To the 10 yard line where that's another Blue Jays. So right on the 10 yard line, huh? Goal on the 10. We'll call it first and goal. No score early goings here. Korth hands off. And into the end zone, hardly touched. Touchdown, Blue Jays. Devontae Smith took the hand up. It's a little bit of that misdirection was Korth takes it to the right and then hands it off. And there was daylight galore right there. Korth got hit hard afterwards. He tried carrying it on his fake, didn't have much of a chance to do it. Took a heck of a shot from the defensive end for Nina, but bounced right back up. And there's a flag on the play, and it's coming back. Oh, my goodness. Holding against Manasha. Wow. Okay. You didn't see it live, but luckily we have instant replay, Jim. <laughs> Very lucky. <laughs> we we, we missed a lot of stuff the first time around. First and goal <laughs> Let's be honest. Line. Well, maybe so we'll look at it next. After first this and goal from the 16. So take the points off the board. Try it again with Smith. Boy, he's quick, isn't he? Matt Young with a tackle for Nina. Smith, the ball that might be a touchdown saving tackle. tackle Young, another one Young. of the players that goes both ways, quarterback and defensive back. Gets up to about the 11, so second and goal from the 11. And a second down substitutions and goal coming in here. 12. Evan Van Dyvenhoven also checks in. He's going to be split out wide to the left. He's got some size to him. And wide to the right. Receiver on the right-hand side, four yards beyond the hash marks. Korth keeps it himself, takes it back to the right and bounces off the defenders and he is going to be right down. to the goal line. That oh. ref, I've got my glasses on that ref's carry. foot. And you can't get much closer. Literally the three inch Nine, line. Yard pickup. Showed some nice savvy with the way he made those cuts in the interior of the line, didn't he? Great camera work there as you can see. He was shy of the goal line. And it's third down so and here we go. Third and one, John. Line. Korth from his shotgun. Will keep it himself, try the left side and in, no problem this time. Touchdown, Manasha Blue Jays. He followed his fullback in. The fullback actually didn't even need to make a block. That was Ty Carlson. But just some great play calling on the part of Manasha on that drive. And great execution. Can't ask for much more in your first drive of the ball game. Really didn't blink after the no. penalty that wiped out the touchdown by Smith. And they come right back and score. Just and that's actually about as tough as it gets when you have first and goal from the 16. So the extra point is up and, and good. It's good. So seven nothing. Manasha leads Nina. Week two of the high school football season. This is showdown. It's Manasha seven. Student section. Here at Menasha, pretty happy with the way things going. Off to a rocking start, <laughs> huh? Sam Bland set the kicker for the extra point for Menasha. Kind of strange Blue teams Jays. playing two games before you start school. Yeah, we've been doing that for a while. I know that, but remember, it seems like we were we did three at a one few time. Years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some warm, humid nights. We're in kind of a tough, uh, tight little box here, you and I. And so only, one, say only one side of the window open. And it's like, wouldn't you know, they had a great concession stand here. And I loaded up on the onions and relish. I hope you don't notice. No, and that's why we have the window open in front of you okay. tonight. Great hot dogs. You know what, for five bucks, you get two hot dogs and a soda. Can't beat that. And set with the kick, short kick, on the 26 yard line. And to about the 35. So, so let's take another time out quickly. This is Showdown. So back to action, Matt Young takes the snap from the shotgun, first and 10 from the 36, and right away, just shy of the Chase first down. Nice carry 
that time Jace by Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah, yeah, he's quick too. You can see a lot of him tonight on the ground. No question about it, but just in the early stages, Ted, you see how the two teams sort of do mirror each other? Quarterbacks in the shotgun, as every quarterback is basically these days, but run very similar offenses. The coaches know each other very well. Jeremy Second Ford, down the head coach and for the Menasha Blue Jays in his 14th season as the head coach. Been around this program for 21 years. Right. For Steve Young, eight years as a head coach at Nina. And some other coaching positions around the state. Big Ooh, hits big as he hit. crosses the 50-yard line. And Matt like Young <laughs> sets up. Matt Young Seth Spath on the keeper. And Young had a collision that time. Heck of a collision. Devontre Smith brought him down. We had down. some fun with the Nita coaches a few years back. Cross except we really didn't want us. No, they, they didn't want us. They didn't, didn't want us coming around. <laughs> they played these game, great games Rock against the Fond du Lacs and the Kimberleys Wait, and everything. One and of the top-ranked teams in the state. Right. Just couldn't get over that one final hurdle. We would always match him up against a Kimberly. Right, every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Appleton North likes us for that, too. Yeah. Ball on the 47-yard line. Nice the national hole. territory across the 40. On an 8-yard pickup that time for the Rockets. Nice job of the part of the Penalty neat offensive Jack line. Carson Zimlock. Clark, number 52, had a nice block. 6'1", 196. Evan Van Dyne with the tackle. Had a nice job. Jack Both Zemlock offense. on the carry. Yep. Both offensive up. lines doing a nice job. Second down and two. Opening up some Holiday holes. 39. Zemlock, four carries last week. 35 yards. Had a touchdown in that game. Second and two from the 39-yard line. One receiver out to the left. Pulls it. Young will keep it himself. Try that left side. Bounces off a couple of defenders. First down and more inside the 30-yard line. Nice job on the part of the quarterback. Did a great job really riding the running back into the line, pulling it out at the last second, and then picking his way through the defenders and putting his head down for the extra couple of yards. Good size, Matt Young, 6'3", 185. As I mentioned, had 129 yards rushing last week. So a nice drive by Nina. Ball sitting on the 27-yard line. Fresh set of downs. Young gives it to Jenkins. Jenkins again getting through some tackles and another first down. Well, they had him right away at the line of scrimmage. And he just Chase scooted Jenkins by the defender. The Great job. I don't know if it was really an option or just a straight handoff. I don't know if Young had the option of pulling it back and keeping it himself. But... If so, that was a great read at the 14 yard with line. what Menasha showed him on defense. That was a perfect read on the part of the quarterback. Rockets. First and 10 from the 13-ish. 14. It's time to receiver split to the right and left. Jenkins in the backfield with Young. They put Schloman in motion. And it is Jenkins. I'll tell you what. Inside the five yard line. Matt Young took a pop. He bounced back up, but I'll tell you what, Power that's the problem you have tackle. when you run the option because you're fair game back there. You're not like a quarterback in the pocket. You can see that shot he line. took from Evan Vandenhoeven. Nine yards. As I mentioned, he bounced right back up. One. So Nina now looking to score, sitting inside the Gallagher's Pizza Red Zone. Second and one. Five-yard line. Young back there. Looks like Zemlock lined up next to him in the backfield. Here goes Schlobin in motion and Billy Marker down flag. before the play. Legal procedure again. Illegal motion. It's a couple of those tonight for Nina. Still second down. So Illegal not motion. Probably costly, but let's okay. see how they respond. Down remains second down. Second down. And so get penalized game. after a score, what would have been a score. Right. Come right back and put six on the board. So now it's Jenkins in the backfield with Young. Second and six and piled mm -hmm. up. At the 11 and push back. Boy, the interior of that line, and inside linebackers from Menasha read that one perfectly. Andrew John, number 45, led the way from his middle linebacker position. And then he just had a 
bevy of buddies around him. And it's third down. Third and seven on the big 11. play here, John. With yeah, this is big. From the this, is, this is really big. This That illegal procedure penalty was very costly, no matter what you said. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Yeah. I rarely say penalties are good. You know, this is definitely four down territory, though. <laughs> first first, first of one year. of the year. First one of the year, my I Had friend. to give you that one. Here we go. Ball in the 11. Third and nice seven. Ball. Right touchdown. up the middle. Touchdown. Nina Rockets is Jack Zemlock went right up the gut. Big number 76, Dylan Thurber, 6'2", 233-pound junior. Did a great job of the line helping spring that ball, spring the hole. And I'll tell you what, that running back took that and just sprinted, didn't he? Boom, right there. Just Menasha didn't even have time to react to get off their blocks. It was a quick running back. Yeah. Impressive drive, overcoming adversity. Both teams overcoming critical penalties in the red zone to score. The extra point attempt by Hans Patel, <laughs> and, and that is like good. And we are tied 7-7. 2.09 remaining in the first quarter. This is Sports Showdown. Well, back at Calder's Stadium. Had a lightning delay, about a 25 minute delay to start this one, but man, it worth the wait so far. It huh? certainly was. This has been fantastic. Great start to the ball game. 209 left to go in the first quarter. Last week we had an interesting game as Kakana just ran rough shot over Ashwabanon. Interesting game, right? Interesting. <laughs> And you know, running teams, where we've seen some good quarterback play through the air. I mean, last week, Kirst for Ashwabanon had that beautiful 80-yard yeah. touchdown bomb. So 7-7, seven, seven, 209. Rockets will take off here. Patel will kick off for the Rockets. Weinberg for Kakana, what, five touchdown passes last week in our game? Weinberg. Yes. What did I say? Weinenberg. I did. We have Weinenbergs here. Why <laughs> don't you stop? <laughs> Take this one to about the 28-yard line. Well, no matter who you are, part of you is an athlete. Whether you're a student, a professional, or a recreational hey, athlete, no, the Bell & Health Title Town Sports Medicine and Orthopedics teams provides Please elite go care go for everybody. Bell & Health, the official health care partner of Sports Showdown. Speaking of non-athletes, Everyone's an athlete. Yeah, except, uh, okay, here, I got a new hip. I got all kinds of issues. Yeah. And I still got under that security barrier downstairs. Who had to unhook the entire thing to walk through? Because he was afraid to try to step over or go under. <laughs> yeah, stuck. the big stuck. Dutchman, that's who could have stepped over. <laughs> yeah. And was time I'm out. just saying, I was disappointed in your athleticism there. We have an injured player on the field. So we've got a timeout. One of the Nina players. So we'll check on that. Who have we got next week, Ted? Not to look ahead, but we've got a nice schedule this year. Very nice schedule. So we check in uh, with the FRCC North, Pulaski at Preble. So the first look at both of those teams. Is Pulaski had a big win to start the season. It's Darius Jones Jr. walking off the field. Good to see him walking off yeah. under his own power. Absolutely. Hey, Gallagher's Pizza is tonight's Red Zone sponsor. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, Irish spirit, now with locations in Suamico and De Pere, as well as two locations in Green Bay on West Mason Street and Webster and Avenue. Luxembourg Casco getting off to a quick start over Seymour tonight, leading 22 to nothing in the second quarter. Two weeks, it's Appleton North at Kimberly here on Showdown. Spinashi goes back to work, ball in the 28. Come on, Chase. About Smith. Three yards picked Tackle up for Smith. Ricardo Martinez, number 76, with a nice block leading away that time for the Blue Jays. 
Yeah, but this field, Ted, when we were here that last time, it was a quagmire. And I remember talking with Second coaches after the ball game, seven. and they said they just wanted to make that game as, as basic as they possibly could because the footing was so terrible. And it was after that game that a bunch of people got together here and said, okay, what do we do to get a field like some of these other schools? And that was one of the determining factors in having this beautiful new field. It's been a while since we've been here. And timeout time called by out. Menasha. Another timeout. Menasha. So, while they're talking charge, it over on the Menasha sideline, we'll let you know that Lamer's bus lines need yeah, you to bring our students to school this support. year. Uh, Earn high care, hourly wages care, and up to $1,800 in bonuses. Visit golamers.com slash careers to apply. And our team physician, Dr. Doug Connor. Thanks they again, David. Sponsors the once care. again. They make it possible to bring you these games. We've always had great sponsors. I think they're checking the clock a little bit here, Ted. Either that or he's asking me if he had made the right call. That's probably one of the two. <laughs> I think he gives me the thumbs up. Did I give him the thumbs up? Well, we Good were talking, though. We, we had an extra yeah, opportunity tonight, to it's talk it's with them. Yeah. The the delay. They were asking us if we wanted to uh, fish it. Well, right. communication up here with walkie-talkie. Right. We, we could tell them what they might have missed. I Mr. felt John like the last thing we needed is you were the walkie-talkie to the officials. Really? Huh. <laughs> I thought it sounded like a great idea. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Second down hey, hey, and seven on the 31. When I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> we never would have called that. That never would have been called. <laughs> so 104 remaining in the first. Second and seven. And there's a first down and more. Smith brought down as he crosses the 45-yard line. I mean, they are just getting holes right at the line of scrimmage, Ted. I mean, he was untouched until he got tackled. So this offensive line is really doing a great job for Manash, the quarterback is doing a great job of the reads. Days. That was just a straight handoff, First just good blocking by the big offensive boys. lineman. Very impressed with this offensive line for Manash so far. Both teams running backs just flying through the lines here. No fear. Unimpeded. So ball on the 46 for a first down. And that time, the, the Rockets there to stack them up after a four-yard game. Yeah, they came with anger that time. Number 52, Carson, Carson Clark. 6'1", 196, senior, middle linebacker. That three. may have been it for the Second. first yeah, quarter. Yeah, I think it will be. We'll see if they get another playoff here. First quarter is winding down. Nope, they're going to let it go. Good first quarter. I would Great say Great first so. quarter of high school football. 7-7. Seven, seven. Nina and Menasha, their first meeting since 2013, and it's been a good one so far. We'll take a timeout. You're watching Showdown on WACY My 32. Getting ready for the start of the second quarter, Nina and Menasha tied 7-7. Ted Stefaniak, John Mino with you for the call tonight. Another score for you, Teddy. Wrightstown and Xavier tied at seven going into the second quarter. That's always, that, I would think that'd be a good one too. I agree. So ball on the 49, there's Korth. Maybe a yard pick up. on the quarterback keeper. Yeah, the uh, defense for Nina all of a sudden seems to be a little more stout than they were. I think they got a Eric little bit of a tongue chewing. Tackle. Eric Schaffelberger. 6'1", 220, making the stop that time. And it's third down and six right at midfield. Third and six coming up. You know, other than that one beautiful pass play we saw, that's the only time they put it in the air. And from a wind perspective, the wind it's not of, really. It's kind of going in the direction of Menasha right now. Yeah. So in court through that pass early in the first quarter. It was against it, yeah. yeah. And in trouble, and the ball is loose, and Still Nina loose. might have it, and they do. They do. Number Come two, Jace Jenkins, who's done a tremendous job carrying the football that time from a secondary position. By Nina, Jace Falls Jenkins, on it. jumping on it. Another look at it here, Jim. Yeah. You know, that, like I mentioned, that Nina defense just coming on a little bit stronger than they were. Once again, that was 66. Eric Schaffelberger that got in initially. So 
First turnover over the game. And by the way, those instant replays you're seeing tonight brought to you by Simon's Cheese. Experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese Little Shoot. So Under first, center. First and 10 from the Menasha 47. Completed pass. That time connecting with Bryce Brownell. Pass is complete to uh, Devontae Smith with the tackle. Again, one of the two-way players. But that's the first time we've seen him under center. He's been in the shotgun every other time. So I don't know if that was a play to basically set something up more down the road or what that was. Brano, senior fullback. Jace Jenkins leaves the ball game right now. Bryce, the son of Andy. Does Brown it feel the, like something? Nina. Does it feel like something blowing in weather-wise? Let's Teddy? not. Let's okay. close our eyes. All right. <laughs> hope that the it wind has just in. picked up. Yeah. Immeasurably. Second and seven for Nina. Nice hole again. Samlock on the carry for another couple Boy, of yards. And I'll tell you what. Number five, Seth Spath, really comes up strong from the secondary. He brings it strong when he comes up. Yeah, you talk about the win. There's keeping an eye on the radar. They said there might be a little something off to the west here that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Well, it's just that all of a sudden the wind really picked up. It would be really in the face right now of the Nina quarterback. Big play here for Nina. Trying to keep some momentum going. From the 43, Young steps Has back. Has the open. He's going to wind up. Downfield he goes. Oh, and, and he overshoots him. Well, he had the man open. Yeah, you know what? It was a, there's a lot of different terms for it. Hitch and go is, uh, is probably the most common where the receivers oh, yeah. stop. You had two receivers out there on the right-hand side, Ted. They both sprinted down about 10 yards, stopped, one stayed, the other kept going, and he broke free from the defensive back. With this wind right now, he overshot him. He might have thought to himself, I need to put a little bit something more into yep. this against that wind, and that's how he overshot him. Yeah, I believe he was looking for Jackson Schlaman. Who was open. He did a great job on his fake, great pump fake by the quarterback. So a punting situation into for the, the Rockets. So, that no, one. it's going to die. About the 11 yard line, close to the 10. We'll step away. You're watching Showdown on my 32. 9 08 remaining in the first half. 7 7 ball game between the Blue Jays and the Rockets. Manasha takes the ball after the punt. Start on their own 11 yard line. Handoff, and it is Smith Oof. spinning, absorbing the contact. The fellow doesn't want to go down. And he didn't go down. Strong, tough runner. Devontae Smith, 138 yards rushing last week. Couple of touchdowns against Beaver Dam in their 34 to 23 win. And Young get all the stop. Take up eight, second down and two. So second and two. I don't think have one of the camera guys swing around and get a shot of the flag. Yeah, she's blowing pretty hard here right now. Yeah, it is. It is really picked up. Really picked up. Something just crashed Something's up here. Going, something just crashed behind us. <laughs> We're manning our post, though, Teddy. Nice fake. Second and two. And He's got it. Look out. Off to the race. He's racers. got a chance to go. To the 40, the 30. It is a foot race. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. A.J. Fork. He had two defenders that had the angle on him, Ted. But it just seemed like he put that in another gear and ran away from them. What a big play. What an impressive run. Great fake, as I mentioned. That was a pure option. Kept it himself. Just did a great job taking it down that sideline. Oh. Look at that going eat. 81 yards. Wow. On the scamper. I thought they had a chance to close on him and push So did I, right the there 40. in front of us. Yeah. And he gained that extra step. That was incredible. So one of the nicest throws we've seen this year, and one of the nicest runs we've seen this year. <laughs> Does it all. The extra point is up. 
and good. And it's a seven point lead for the hometown team, the Menasha Blue Jays, leading the Nina Rockets. 14 to seven, we'll be back after this timeout. Seven point lead now for the Menasha Blue Jays over the Nina Rockets. Ted and Johnny with you for this one. Late start due to lightning and hopefully trying to get this one in before any more weather comes rolling in. Got some other scores for you. Teddy Appleton West leads Appleton East 10 to seven in the second. Uh, let's see, Westy Pier in Hortonville tied at seven. Kakana leads Southwest 21 to nothing. Pulaski 14 to 12 over Brookfield Central in the second. Kimberly 14 to nothing over Ashwaubenon. And Wrightstown Xavier tied at seven. They were talking about the wind. The wind just knocked it off the tee. Let's see if I'll try to do it again without somebody holding it. And we're going to have to have a holder. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh boy, I just saw a big burst of lightning. Big burst. Out there in that direction. But I don't know north, south, or east, or west from here, but. Now we're elevated so we can see off in the distance a little bit. The officials see it. Well, and there actually is a uh, a person with the gauge, with the meter, as it goes into the end zone. All right, so we'll step away one more time. 30 second break, this is Showdown. So 8.07, and first play goes to Jack Zemlock. Uh, Juan Alanis first made the tackle. Gave him about four. Yep. So a second down coming up. Well, Kimberly now is, or excuse Kimberly, Nina is definitely going into the teeth of that wind right now in regards to trying to throw. Nice gain, close Jenkins. to the first down, might have it. That second effort. Kept the legs moving. Which official you're looking at, near sideline or far sideline? Well, they're both right on, and it is a first down. Yeah. There you go. Nice run. Look at that second effort. Carry the defender with him. So the wind has picked up. The wind has also picked up a chill. Yes, it has. Um, it would be nice to get to halftime. That would be very important to make it to halftime. Well, and it may be a, a short halftime. That could happen with the delay. With right? the delay, but, but I mean, it'd be nice for the delay to be burnt up during halftime. Yeah. Nice defensive play that time. Loss of one. Tell you what, this defense from Anasha, they're all right. Evan Vandenhoven, one of the defenders in there that time for the loss of one, second and 11. You know, one thing about this Menasha team, Ted, you know, I think being in that new conference that they're going to be in this year, yeah. they're going to surprise some people. I mean, how many of those teams have ever seen Menasha? In the FRCC side? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I little, mean? little controversy there. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, there's still that little <laughs> feeling of, you know, you don't really have a book on them because you haven't played them every year for the last, you know, 20 years like most of those teams in the conference did. Short gain. Yeah, the down and distance is brought to you by Gandrude Chevrolet. Find the right vehicle at the right value for your money. Complete inventory online at GandrudeChevrolet.com. Third and ten. This is a big play. I don't know if Nina can pick it up, but I'll tell you what, late in the first half, getting to be late in the first half, 5.42 left to go, punting against this wind, you don't want to give Menasha a chance to put seven more on the board before halftime. So this is big. Sitting on the 30-yard line. Sprint option. Yeah. Nice pitch. 
perfect timing and a first down wow. and four for the Rockets. Terrific play that time oh, by Young. Outstanding. Young was going down. He got Top hit, was going Jake down, Jenkins. and still made a perfect pitch. Those are oftentimes fumbles because you really don't have a good solid grasp of the football as you're going down like that. But he just did a fantastic job with this option. Watch this. Does a great job. Just the sprint option. And while going down, gets the toss out there to Jace Jenkins for the first down. Very, very big play for Nina. Still sitting on their own 43 with a fresh set of downs. Just inside five minutes to go in the first half. Rockets trailing by seven. That's going to be a penalty. Another illegal procedure. I think the quarterback was calling for the ball, and it wasn't snapped. That's what it was. Back him up five yards. So both teams overcoming penalties. Again, what a great job. Project they're working on here. The red, white, and blue game. We talked about that a little bit at the beginning of the yeah. game. All the proceeds going tonight going to a veterans cause to help take veterans out hunting. A bunch of veterans, we're honorary captains for tonight's ball game. Really cool what the folks here at Menasha and Nina are all coming together for. Very cool. I think we're gonna reset the, set the clock. clock here. I think just by a couple of seconds to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. Coach Corp he was on top of it. He did it the old fashioned way the ref did. He was yelling it up to the booth here. <laughs> Using his fingers and yelling. <laughs> I like it. From the 38. Long deep drop Screen. this time. Yep. And Jenkins. Yeah, that thing didn't have much timing from the get go. Just didn't. Loss of another couple. You know, it's one of those things, too. It was a good call, or you'd think it'd be a good call, but Menasha had the same idea. Their defensive ends weren't, weren't rushing. When they started rushing, then when they could tell it was too easy, they put the brakes out and they sniffed out the screen. The 30, but it just, didn't, it, it just didn't seem like a good play to begin with, right? Second I mean, it's just kind home. of helter-skelter. Bit of a hole here. Second and 17. Going the wrong way. This is the right way, and Zemlock. Boy, what a burst up the middle, huh? Jack Zemlock, ball Outstanding. 5'10", only 140 pounds. Man, does he get through there in a hurry. Pick up about 12 yards. Okay. So manageable with third and about five, three and a half to go. Teddy, the wind has completely shifted in the other direction. The flags above the stands over there yeah. were blowing completely left to right. Now they're coming straight at us. Time, time out up. by Nina. Nina. Yeah, Nina Probably a good time, time to take a timeout. Try to get this first down. That is our first time out. So we'll, we'll keep it here, though. And while they're taking a timeout, we'll let you know that Cobus and Buses is now hiring. Top pay for part-time work with flexible hours. Cobus and Buses, family pride in every ride. Another partial score. Little shoot 7 to nothing over Wapaka. Apton West 10 to 7 over East Kimberly 14 to nothing over Ashwabada and Pulaski 14 12 over Brookfield Central Kakana 21 to nothing over Southwest Westy Pier and Hortonville tied at 7 Wrightstown and Xavier tied at 7 Luxembourg Casco 22 to nothing over Seymour in a partial a lot of weather delays are taking place out yeah, there right I bet. now though I bet. around the area a lot of weather delays By the way, you know, we were talking about last week's game, the Ashwaubenon and Kakana game. You can see that on our website right now. If you go to NBC26.com slash sports showdown, you'll be able to see the highlights from last week's game, plus the entire game. Oh, sports showdown. Zemlock, first down, and he absorbed the contact and just kept those legs churning. He certainly did, but I'll tell you what, Seth Spath, once again, number five, not afraid to come up and put his hammer down. Wow. But yeah, just a quick burst. Look how quick he got through that line, Ted. That was incredible. The Menasha players aren't able to make, to get off their initial block after your initial contact. You kind of scrape off them and everything. They can't, they're, they're turning their heads and he's past them. Put the hammer down. Put, you like that? I did, I like that. Thank you. 
That was just for you. Ne never hit the brakes. And he was shifting gears. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so ball on the 43. <laughs> 244 to go. And Young. Nice fake. Yep, nice job that time. Very nice. Max Stuck got him. Good Garth Brooks reference, by the way. For about 1992. <laughs> Very good. Very impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. A six-yard pickup. Now Second all down your and four on the 30s. Yes. Television radio. Yes. Did you, did you ever do country? I music? did not. I was going to say. I did not. We had Trucker Thursday on one of my shows. Remember oh, that? Yes, we played trucker yes, music. Yes. We had that. Think, oh, of course, Mondays was business day. Remember that one, I believe. Yes. Okay. It's a high school show. <laughs> Another nice run. And a first down for the Rockets. Oh, Very nice. Down. I'll tell you what, yeah, with two minutes to play in the first half, they got a shot. Hey, both teams have great high composure high in this one. Absolutely. Football. Yep. Totally. Good Zemlock. At the 28 and again, yard he's not a big guy. It's good for a he's at 140 game. pounds, but wow. He's so quick that when there, when there is contact, he's delivering it. So ball on the 28, first and 10. The league, uh, jumped. Penalty marker down. Drew him offside. On Menasha. So a shorter field, first and five. Great crowd here on tonight, huh, Ted? Both sides. Nina traveled well. Again, what was it, 6.2 miles, you said? The distance? You're going to... Uh, between the schools? Yeah. Yeah. 6.3. 6.3. Yeah. Okay. It's on the Google map. Uh-huh. Yeah. I thought maybe you ran it. And you had one of those uh, little thingies on your watch or whatever. I don't know if I could run. Time out called by Menasha. Six miles. Second charge time. So 137 to play first half. So free of charge. Walk in for an injury assessment and immediate evaluation by the Bellin Health Titletown Sports Medicine and Orthopedics team. Save the cost of an ER or urgent care visit for sports injuries. Experience elite care for everybody. Bellin Health, the official health care partner of Sports Showdown. One thirty-seven to go, first half. You know, you talk about these schools, Ted. I remember a few years ago when they were Division II. Kimberly was Division II, Menasha Division II, and it was so hard for them to get out of this area. You know, they were, such gr they were really, really good football teams, but they didn't advance all that far because there were some games where you say these are probably the top two teams in the state right. going head-to-head. -head. Well, the last time Menasha had a full season, 2019, they right. they've been over to the state championship game. Absolutely, ended up being the D3 runner-up. Yep. Go back to 2014, D2 state champs. So yeah, I mean you you're talking about that D2, D3, right, right, powerhouses. Although we've got some good D5s. Oh, absolutely, D4s. no question. For the tackle. No question. A lot of lightning off on the horizon. Shh. I okay. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Second down and two. But I right think that is, that is past us. I don't think that is. Yeah, I think it's moving on. It's slipping to the north. Right. They're keeping an eye on it, believe me. Second and two just inside. Big hole. A minute to go. Jenkins, and he is wow. close to the first down he, inside the Gallagher's Pizza Red Zone. He does as good a job with second effort Thanks, after the initial him. contact as we've seen in a long time. Just a great job keeping the legs moving, staying really low, and pushing the pile. Upon big, the big run right there. Line. First and 45 goal. seconds Forty left. Nina not hurrying, though. They're really kind of just taking their time going up to the line. Backfield with Jenkins. Jenkins will take it across the five. And a touchdown saving tackle again that time. Jenkins. By, Sam, by Seth Spath. Time so timeout out called by Nina. 30 seconds left to play in the first half. Second and what, Ted? About three? I would 
would say so. A little over three. It's quite a drive. Holy man, used up a lot of time. <laughs> Went over a lot of real estate, had some penalties, had some big third downs they had to overcome. Yeah, I'm not sure how long this drive has taken, but it, it's I mean. like six minutes, seven minutes. I think it was seven minutes when they got the ball. I think if you're Nina, too, I mean, that's that's got to be part of the strategy to, right. to, to kind control of control it. Grind you bet. This one out, control the clock. Well, we saw Kakana last week, and they looked impressive. Impressive again tonight over Green Bay Southwest, 28 to 6. Uh, Fond du Lac has a good team again. Fond du Lac trailing Franklin 23 to 6 at halftime. Franklin, the number one team in the state, and with a quarterback that's already committed to Wisconsin. It's a pretty tough non-conference opponent, huh? Absolutely. So meanwhile, 30 seconds to go here. Rockets looking to tie it up. Second and goal. Sitting on the three-yard line. The give is to Jenkins, who is in. Touchdown, Rockets. What a drive. As we mentioned before, they needed that. They got it. They had some huge third down conversions. Very, very impressive drive on the part of Nina. Just when it sort of had that tenor, that feeling that Menash was taking control a little bit with that drive that they had of the big long, the big plays. So they're really uh, got to be proud of themselves after that drive. Keeping their composure, coming right back. Grinding it out. Grinding it out is the best of them. An extra point away from tying this one up. So Patel, the extra point is good. And we're tied yeah, at good. 14 apiece with 27 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Great high school football game. Great first half. Well played, hard it's hitting, good quarterback play. Could ask down. for much better, Teddy. It is now Nino 14, Manacho 14. Almost like we drew it up that way. <laughs> Tell you what, buddy. There's been a few games I've wondered who drew up. <laughs> I won. I'm not going to get started. Not over. I'm not going to get started. I'm back it up. Got a uh, text here from our man Brian, our ace spotter, Brian yes. Brick. Pouring rain in the pier right oh now boy. at those games. Pouring rain. But I'm guessing, I'm no meteorologist like you. Right. But I think it's You're sliding not. from here, that's north and sliding northeast okay. away from us. So Keep let's, on sailing. Let's hope. Yep. At least for us. For <laughs> us. Those people so, northeast well, of us are like, well, sorry to why be you? <laughs> <laughs> because we have a lot to do with it. Exactly. <laughs> yep. This is fun, though, man. I still said... The number one thing missed, I thought, last year was high school football. Oh. Out of all the problems. Absolutely. Both teams ended up playing in the alternate spring season. Yep. This year. Hard to get a read off of that, though. I tried building a schedule off of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. That's why they have swing games, right, Teddy? Yes. <laughs> Week three are swing games. <laughs> we try to... Try to stick to our schedule. We'll see. <laughs> Squibber. Squib. Doing it at the 24. And, and I think 20, that'll do it. One seconds to right. work here. Now, we back. did see A.J. Korth uncork a long pass. Just a beautiful <laughs> pass. One of the literally... One of the nicest passes I've ever seen a high school quarterback throw. And I'm not kidding. Had to be about 45, 47 yards in the air. Tight spiral yeah. right on the money. That was outstanding. So the wind has died down here, at least on this side of the field as I look at the flags. So we'll see if they want to take a shot down the field here. 21. Well, that wind's in seconds. their face pretty much. You see it's two to the left, one to the near sideline. Looking, looking for it left and, and he'll go down so they made this defense just pinned their ears back that time they knew and some flags coming up late flag flags two late flags i saw two rockets go we're right. down first yeah yeah first of all on this area yeah yeah, yeah. 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 flags came out so I, but i didn't see an offensive player by the way just a personal foul. Oh. 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 
Yeah, I don't know exactly what it was, but I think I saw the same thing you saw, Ted. Two, two Nina players were down late, like after the end of the play, and the flags were kind of tossed in their direction. Yeah. So something must have happened, and then they snuck away. And I think that will bring the curtain down on this first half with 11 seconds to go and 80 yards to go for a score. <laughs> Teddy says, nah. Almost 85 yards to go for a score. Well, we saw an 81-yard touchdown run already. Yeah, we did. Mark it back on the 17-yard run. Second down and long. So they'll take a knee here. The clock is running and he's up under just, center. Yeah, they're just going to let it go. Victory here. formation. Good first half. Absolutely. Couldn't ask for a better first half. 14 14. The Rockets and the Blue Jays in Menasha. How about this? How about this for a halftime score? Week two of the high school football season, 14 14. Nina and Menasha, their first meeting since. 2013. Ted Stefaniak, John Mino with you for the game tonight. It's been a good one so far, John. Yeah, it certainly has. And you know, we talk about these rivalry games, and even like De Pierre and West De Pierre, I still think those are some of the greatest games of all time. Appleton East, Appleton West, the, the old traditional games, Teddy. I, and I know conferences have really, really been torn apart and rebuilt over the past few years. And, and in a lot of cases, you know, needed to be done. But there's still something special in two really, really long time rivals get together in a ball game like this. This is great to see. Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking at the clock. Now, the officials did not go into their locker room at halftime here. So we're going to look at uh, the young cheerleaders here. Or Manash, you can see the kids out there. They're gymnasts. Look at this. Incredible gymnasts out there. Doing a great job. We were talking about look the it. officials. Um, and now they just reduced halftime to five minutes. So that's what I was a little bit worried about. The officials get together. This is a new WIA rule. So we're going to take a quick break, get some yeah. commercials in, and we'll be back. It's going to be a short halftime, everybody. Stick around. We'll be back after this timeout. 14-14 at half. Very special moment before the game. Honorary captains. Yeah, look at that. Those are all veterans that they invited here. Honorary captains on the side of Menasha. All proceeds go into a tremendous cause. They'll support the Horicon Marsh Annual Veterans Hunt. Each year, 100% of volunteers host a weekend of hunting with over 55 volunteer guides who donate their time, boats, dogs, and gas, plus 50 staff volunteers to give this opportunity to 80 or more veterans. Wonderful cause, and congratulations to Nina and Menasha all getting together on this for their first red, white, and blue game to honor veterans. A very special game and a very good game so far. Tied at 14 at the half. This is an abbreviated halftime. Second half gets started after this timeout. Just a... Back at Menasha, we were getting ready to start the third quarter here, and the officials came on the field and have just waved everybody off the field. And now we have just gone into a suspension of this game. The players for both teams going, uh, leaving the field, and they've advised all the fans to leave the stadium as right. well and get to your cars. Yeah, yeah, they're advising everybody to get to their cars right now. Uh, so they're clearing the stands, and we were literally seconds away from the start of the second half, uh, obviously an abbreviated halftime. So we're just going to have to bear with everybody else here, folks, and let you know what's going on. It's strange. The weather didn't all of a sudden. It's not like something seemed to blow in or that, Teddy. I mean, it's, it's been about the same way for the last 20 minutes or so, but something must have moved into the area, obviously, that's showing up on radar. Well, and, and we were commenting, too, you know, before the end of that first half, we had seen some lightning off in the distance. Right. We believe that was off to the northeast, um, moving away from us. Right. But we haven't seen lightning in a while, so the officials did get together right after the half and they were obviously looking right at, at the radar yeah and there's one of uh, there's a person down there she's a trainer for menasha and she had the actual gauge on her phone or on her watch basically so to speak and that would determine whether or not we're going to go into the delay so that's where we're at right now and we have gone into a delay so we're going to take a quick time out come right back Try to get you some more information on the status of this game and when we might expect to be back. Uh, so, like we said, let's take a quick timeout. Um, we know that it's probably going to be at least a half hour. The right. WIA rules, once there's lightning, it's at least a half an hour. So we're going to take a quick timeout, come back with you with an update 
on the status of this game. This is Showdown. We are in a weather delay, and you got some information, Johnny? Well, no, I don't oh. have more information. I just had a bunch more scores for you if you wanted. But this is taking place all over northeast Wisconsin. A lot of them have been delayed now is what I'm getting from uh, people. So I'll still give some of the partials. I've got Pulaski 14 to, oh, excuse me, Brookfield Central 18 to 14 over Pulaski in the third. Freedom 23 to nothing over Fox Valley Lutheran at half. Denmark 12 to nothing over New London at halftime. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Appleton West leading Appleton East 17 to 7. Franklin leading Fond du Lac 23 to 6 at halftime. Kakana 28 to 6 over Southwest. So little shoot 7 to nothing over Wapaka. Those are some of the early uh, partials we have. And again, I don't think we're in the only situation like this around Northeast Wisconsin uh, well, right I've now. I've already heard that uh, Kimberly Ashwabanon has been postponed for the remainder of their game to okay. tomorrow morning. So okay. uh, that is not our case yet. We don't know what the situation is going to be. We know it's at least a half an hour. Uh, after the latest lightning strike. So it's going to be uh, about 30 minutes. Hopefully we'll be back, re be able to rejoin you for the second half of this game. It's been a good one so far. 14-14 at half. The weather delay rolled in before the start of the third quarter. We'll let you know what's happening as we know. But uh, stay tuned, and we'll get you some more information. But for now, for John Mino, I'm Ted Stefaniak. This is Showdown. We'll see you in a little bit. Tonight's showdown game of the week on My32 was brought to you by Bellin Health. Welcome to your healthiest life. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, Irish spirit. Lamers, the passenger professionals. Simon Specialty Cheese, experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese Little Shoe. Cobus and Buses, family pride in every ride. And Gandrew Chevrolet. Wisconsin's number one selling Chevrolet dealership. Hey, don't forget to watch NBC 26 tomorrow. We've got a little football going on for you. The Green Bay Packers visiting the Buffalo Bills in the preseason finale. The kickoff is at noon. Pre-game coverage gets underway at 11 a.m. Make sure you're watching NBC 26 tomorrow morning. Of course, post-game coverage on NBC 26 live at 5 o'clock. And don't forget to join us next week, week three of the high school football season. It'll be a good one, Johnny. Absolutely. FRCC against the Hornets from Green Bay Preble. You bet. So our kickoff will get underway 7 o'clock next Friday from Green Bay Preble. And I just want to say one more time, congratulations to Manash and all the folks that put this together for the red, white, and blue game with all the proceeds going to help veterans take them out hunting and things like that. Outstanding. That's tip my hat to them. Absolutely. But again, now... Uh, we're so sorry we can't bring you the second half of this one. No TV for this one tomorrow. But again, free admission here at Menasha. Come out and support these two teams as they play one more half. With nothing decided, it's 14-14. And they're two half. good football teams. Oh, man, I wish we could have shown you the second half. But it is suspended tonight, so we are done for the evening for our broadcast. Don't forget to join Nina and John at 934. WACY News at 9.30 Not me, not tonight. this John. Not you, John. No. You get the rest of the night off, my Yes, friend. I do. Because you're John Mino. I'm Ted Stefaniak. We thank you so much for watching, everyone.